hi guys welcome to this video in this video i'm going to be showing you how we can deploy a django project to a platform named covery so first of all i have this very basic project here i have it running on the local host with a port 8000 now if i hit follow as you can see this followers updates to one and if i unfollow this follower updates to zero so this project is just a very basic project that uses the followers and following social media type of feature so the reason why i choose to deploy this project is because it has a database it's using a database so in this video i'm going to show you how you can deploy your django project with postgresql database onto covery so let's get started with that so right here this is the project folder so as you can see i have initialized a git right here and i have the folder here if i click into it you're going to see the whole project and right here i have a requirement.txt file so right now i already have this pushed to github if i come back into my chrome right here you're gonna see that i already have this on github so that's the first thing you need to do you need to make sure that you have it pushed to github already and you have a repository for that after you have that the next thing you want to do is to go to covery.com and sign up using your github or gitlab account I'm going to leave a link in the description below where you can easily sign up for an account. And once you have that, you are going to come into your dashboard and you'll be able to see this button right here that says create project. Once you click on create project, it will pop this up. And now we're just going to input the name of the project that we want to create. So let's just say Django follow. Now this is just a test. So the name doesn't really matter here, but let's just give it Django follow and hit create. So that is going to go ahead and create a new project for us named Django follow. And once we are in this project now, as you can see, it says Django follow. The next thing we want to do is to create an environment for this, our project. So let's click on create environment and let's input the environment name and we can say EMV. And then we're going to say create and it says your environment has been created. Boom. So now it brings us into the environment and it says ready. So now that we have this done, the next thing we just want to do is to go ahead and create a new application. So let's just say add my first app and let's give it an app name so we can say let's just say follow app. So that's just the name of this app and then we're going to choose the GitHub repository. So if we come back here you see that the GitHub repository is slash django follow so this is what we should be looking for if i click on this it brings github if i click on github i'll see a list of all the repositories i have when i click on this repository field so i'm going to look for where i have django follow this is it so this is what i want to use and then we need to input the branch so let's come back here to confirm the branch in which this is pushed to so it's pushed on the main branch so we're just going to come here and say main if yours is on master just hit master and let's leave this just like this so now let's hit create and now that we we have this created we're just going to give it a few seconds and that is going to create for us boom as you can see now we have that app created so now that we have this app created we just want to configure some things so we're going to come here into settings of this app and if we come to port we're going to need to add a port 8000 now this is because what we are deploying is a django app and as we know django runs on a port of 8000 so we're going to say add and we hit save so now that we have that saved we're going to come into the general settings right here in the general settings we're going to scroll down so this build mode we don't want it to use build packs we want it to use a docker file and then the docker file part we're going to leave it uh, like that as slash but now, if I try to hit save, it's going to give me an error. And the error it gives me, it says, cannot find slash docker file in the repository. So if I come here, as you can see, we do not have a docker file in here. So that is an error. And we're going to need to fix that. So first of all, let's hit cancel. And the next thing we want to do is to come right in here. And what we want to do now is to come into our file our folder on our local project so we are going to have to create two files and the first one is going to be a docker file so i'm going to right click and hit new 
I'm gonna say text document and I'm just gonna name it docker file so like this and it's not gonna have an extension so just docker file and yes so now I'm going to have to open this with notepad just to edit it so I can say what I can do is to actually open notepad and just drag that in there so I have notepad opened I'm just gonna drag it in here so now what is gonna the code that is gonna go into this file is this code so this is a docker file code that is gonna take care of our application so what it's doing is is this is the file that is going to be used to build our application or run our application on the server once we deploy it so it's just importing python and doing all the needful stuff so right here now you don't really need to you know be an expert in docker to know how to use Covery or anything like that all you just need to do is to be able to use or have this code in your docker file and you can just get this code sample if you want to deploy your own django project i'm going to leave a github link to the repository of this particular project that i'm deploying so you are going to be able to get this docker file and now once you have this just hit save and the next thing we want to do if we come here you'll see that we are actually using a file named entrypoint.sh we also need to create that file we're going to right click hit new and we're going to hit text document and let's just say entrypoint.sh want to change that and right now we want to bring that into notepad and what the code that's going to go in here is this code so this is just basically migrating our database as i said we're going to be using a database here which is postgresql and you know in django once you have once you start a new project you need to migrate your models to the database before running the server so this is what this file is just doing is running our commands for us so let's just save this and now that we have this saved we can cancel it i'm just gonna hit cancel and the next thing we want to do now is to come right in here so if we come into our environment we're going to come into env now we want to create a new database so we're going to come into add we're going to create database and let's just choose the database name let's just say data or something like that and now let's just choose the database type so we're using postgresql and let's use version 11 then we're gonna hit create so now that we have this created we have our app created and we just have our database created in the same environment let's first of all deploy this database we're going to come to actions and then hit deploy so it says database has been deployed so this is just going to take as you can see right here says deploying it's going to take a few seconds to just deploy and as that is doing next thing we want to do is to connect this database that we have here with our app if i come back to emv you're going to see that we have a database and we have our app which is our django app in the same environment now let's connect these two together now to be able to do this we actually need to go into the settings file of our project so we're going to come back to our project locally we're going to go into django follow we're going to go into the project file right here in the settings.py let's open this up in our notepad so first of all let me just open my notepad and drag that into it so now i have this in here then what i just need to do now is to scroll down to where i see database i do not need this i'm just going to delete this database right here there's a way i'm going to configure this to connect our database so what i'm going to put in here is this code so this is the code that's going to go in here i'm just going to maximize this right here what i just pasted here was the code that is given to us in the recovery documentation but we're actually going to have to configure this to use our own database that we just created so this is just using connecting our postgres database with our app using our environment variables so what we need to do now is to come back into chrome and then we're going to come in here now in our app we're going to click on our app and then we're going to go into environment variables and what we just need to do is to let's go back in here first of all now right here where we have 
discovery database my db database name i'm gonna have to come in here and look for where we have default database name so if you scroll down you see now it says discovery postgresql it says our database code then it says default database name so i'm going to copy this and then we're going to come back in here and then we're just going to select that and paste it and then the value we need to come in here and let's see the value so the value is also postgres which is already provided so we don't need to change that now the next thing we want to change is this discovery database my db username we're actually going to change this to discovery postgresql login so as you can see this says login i'm just going to copy this and i'm going to change it right here so where we have this my db username we change it to login and this should also be postgresql if we come in here and view it so as you can see that's also postgres so we don't need to change that the next thing now is this discovery database my db password so the password is not just an environment variable now it's a secret variable because we don't want just anybody to be able to view this so we're going to come into secret variables and where we see discovery postgreql our code and password we're going to copy that and we're going to come back in here and then we're going to replace it with this so now that we have this when we're using the password we don't need to provide the value now this is for security purposes because we don't want to have our database password just open in our code so that is what is going to be there just only the environment variable name or just the variable name now the next two things we need to do is to configure the host and the port so this is also easy we can come back to environment variables so right here where we see host let's just copy that come back in here replace it so we're going to paste this and then the value also we're just going to copy the value and then we're going to paste it in there we change it from localhost i'm going to do the same thing for the port so this is the host if we come down here we see the port let's copy it and then i'm going to paste it in here and then the port should also be 5432 if i come in here and try to view that good so that's 5432 now let me come back here and save this so this is how we can connect the database using the environment and secret variables so now let's come back in here so we come back in here now and the first thing we see is that our project is already running so now that we have this we have uh, i mean our postgres database is already running so we've connected our database with our app right here and then we have our project already running the next thing we just want to do is to make sure that we update this so as you can see in our project right here we've made a lot of changes we connected our postgresql with our app and right in here we created docker file and entry point.sh files so we want to push these changes to our repository i'm just going to open my terminal and right here we're going to run a command so this is the command we're going to run and we're going to have to specify it with the file entry point.sh and we have that so now we just need to push this to our repository so we're just going to reinitialize let's just go back and use so we're going to add that and commit main and then let's just push that so done so we have that done now this would have updated already on our repository and once this updates automatically it should already be deploying in our recovery so let's come back to in here so right here now we can see that it automatically says deploying so it's ready deploying and what we just need to do is to click on show logs so we can see what is going on how it's deploying and everything is doing in real time so I'm just going to speed this up. So as you can see now, it says deployed. That means everything has been deployed successfully. So what we can just do is to come here. It says domain and it gives us the domain. It says is ready. So we just need to copy this domain. We're just going to copy it. And then let's just open a new tab and go to that domain. So as you can see right here, it says invalid http so this particular domain 
is not allowed in our project so this is just because if we come into our github repository here and we come into django follow let's go into the project file if we come into settings.py we're going to see that when we are configuring we didn't add any domain to the allowed host so what we can just do is to allow all domains so if we add any domain to our project it's just going to accept it so let's just it's the edit file and then what we're just going to do is to come to where we see allowed host and then we're going to have two quotes and in there we're just going to put asterisk so this signifies that we can allow any host in our application so we're just going to scroll down and commit changes so now that we commit change once we come into covery automatically covery is going to redeploy this our project so we're just this is going to change to as you can see it says could then now it has changed to deploying so it's ready redeploying our project so again i'm going to speed this up now our project has been deployed so if i just copy our url right here so this is our project url and i come into a new tab and i open it up so now you can see that our project is running successfully without any error so to just test this and make sure that the database we deployed is working let's hit the follow button so if i hit the follow button this should update to one and this means that uh the value has been updated in our database so because this is using a database this confirms that our database is working our postgres database is working. so before you even start deploying just make sure that you have been signed up to covery so make sure that you have an account with covery i'm also going to leave a link in the description below where you can easily sign up so you're going to be able to sign up with your github or gitlab account and once you've done that you can deploy your project using discovery platform that's going to be all for this video i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please don't forget to smash the like button and i'll see you in the next one